Welcome to the solution video for week 46 uh, of 2020. This week you were tasked with building an English Premier League table mock-up and I'm going to show you how to rebuild that, at least the major components. I'm not going to finish it all the way, but I'll take you almost all the way through it and I'll do it in one sheet. I sort of left the number of sheets up to you and I've seen everything from one to three sheets as the solution. So let's hop in. I've already connected to the EPL data. What I first need to do is actually pivot my data source. So I'm going to select home team and away team, right click, and then select pivot. After my pivot, I'm actually going to be able to start my analysis right away. So after we've pivoted our data, we can just take field values, bring that out on rows here, and you'll see all of our teams have come through. Now we need to create two calculations. Well, we actually need to make a couple here, but I'm going to start with two, two calculations that sort of have the same base. I'm going to start by saying if uh, I'm going to calculate the total points here. So I'm going to start by saying if pivot field names is equal to home team and the goals scored. So this is FTHG, the home team goals are greater than the FTAG, the away team goals. I'm gonna put this in parentheses and I'll probably put that on the same line. And I'm just gonna copy this. So that's gonna be if the home team wins. I'm just gonna copy this value, hit enter, type or, paste this in, and I'm gonna change this to away team. And I'm going to swap the, the sign on this. So if the away team scores more goals, then three. Else if FTAG is equal to FTHG, if there's a tie, then one. Else zero will be a loss. There we have, that's just points. I'm just going to hit OK. I'm just going to bring points out on the column so we can see it. And let's bring out each team, which is going to be the pivot field values. So there's every team. We can sort it. That's exactly what we need to do. Now we've got points. I'm going to go find that field. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to edit it. And where I have three, one, and zero, I'm going to put in quotes W for win, T for tie, and then L for loss. I'm just going to call this WLT, win, loss, tie. I'm going to hit OK. I'm now going to duplicate points here. And now I'm going to go find WLT. I'm going to click and drag this out onto color. And you can sort of see I just kind of need to, wins were green, losses were red, and ties were gray for the most part. Now I've got that section built out. I need labels. I'm going to put labels on my gray bar here. I'm just going to click label, add mark labels, and now I'm going to do a dual axis that's synchronized. So dual axis, synchronized axes, and I'm going to change my mark type here to bar. So we've got that done now. So I need to put in total matches, wins, losses, and ties in front of this somehow. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm just going to create a quick calculated field. And I'm just going to say if, and I'm, I'm doing this a whole new way that I haven't really thought about at this point, but I'm just going to say if points is equal to three, then date end. And I'm going to do this as an aggregation. Say count distinct. And you know what? I'm going to wrap this in a level of detail calculation just to be safe. And this will just roll it up at the pivot feed field value or the team level. So pivot field values. So for every, whoops, for every team, count if there has been a win. If there has been a win, then count it. So I should probably do this, sort of organize things out a little bit for you. And that will sort of show, right? There's our fixed and our count distinct. and I'll just tab that in. And this is just going to be W for wins. I'm going to take W. Let's go find that field. I'm going to drop it on pivot field values. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make that discrete. So there's our wins now showing up. I'm going to just duplicate this field. 
and I'm going to edit it. And now I can do the same thing for ties, except I'll just change my points to one. I'll go find that T, bring it out on my field, right click, discrete. And then the last one, duplicating for losses. I actually have two more. I need total matches played. Let's do L. And I can change this to zero. This is the fun part. L. Let's take L out here. Change it to discrete. And then the last one, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to edit. And matches played, I'm just going to call MP. I'm going to get rid of my if statement in my count distinct field here, which is just counting the distinct number of dates based on that number. So matches played now will be that MP. Bring this out here. This should be the total of all of those. Change that to discrete. Put that out in front here. So now we have uh, our values showing up. Matches played, wins, ties, losses. Now we need to add the last five matches. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to build an ad hoc calculation because it's the easiest way for me to do it. I'm going to double click. I'm going to type if index is less than or equal to five, then index end. And this is going to eventually just return our last five matches. And I need to edit my table calculation in a second here. But let's change our mark type to uh, a circle. Let's change the size, make it a little bit bigger. Here, I'm just going to make this fit my entire view just to make it easier. Maybe make it just even a little bit larger as well. And then we've got that win-loss tie. Let's add that to color here. Awesome. Don't worry about the over, like it's not working because we need to update our table calculation in a second here. Let's also add a mark label for win-loss tie. Just going to duplicate and put that on label. And then we can just, you know, we'll center that up vertically and in the middle. Change the color and the opacity to uh, 25%. And then, oh, our labels, by the way, we want to change it to match the mark color here as well. So when we take a look, it's sort of overlapping at this point. But the way we fix that is we can, oh, one last thing, let's take date because we need to get essentially every match out on our data set here. So we're just going to add date, exact date. And now we've got lots going on in this visualization. We just need to get our table calc right. So we're going to edit our table calculation and we're going to choose date and win-loss tie. So for every team, we're include the date and the win-loss tie. Let's get the, the, the values rolling through here. Now, all we have to do is actually sort this. It's not sorted intuitively the way that we would anticipate. And I just have to narrow my screen down here to do that. Uh, I'm going to change this. and I'm going to go find date. And I'm just going to choose minimum. And I'm going to uh, say ascending. So let's just check the dates here. 18, 4, 27. I've got them going in the wrong order. So let's try ascending. Hmm. That's not what I anticipated returning. Maybe I will change my index here. And instead of using index, I'll use last because I know last is it's one of my favorite calculations. And I'm just going to say if last is uh, less than or equal to negative four, let's check four, eight, 25. All right, so that's better. It's just in the wrong order here. I'm just going to double click and just say five minus. So now I'm just looking at these. The dates look good all the way down. These nulls can get hidden, but that's it. That's how you can build this table out. The rest is just, you know, formatting, get, getting rid of things, changing the bar size, and, and, and like I said, nailing down the formatting. But this is how you build out that table in a single sheet. So that's it for week 46 of 2020 and mark it down. I've got one last workout Wednesday in December, but that'll be it for this year. So if you've made it through this, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.